Um, peripheral is a robot clone of your body. You can enter into this body, which can be an exact replica of yours, and you can feel everything that this peripheral is feeling in a different place or even in a different time. At some point, Flynn realizes that she's not actually playing a sim anymore. She's piloting a robot body in 2100, and her whole world changes. Holy shit! <laughs> it was like being there! She wakes up in future London, and there feels like there's a schism in the world. There's this stark contrast between Clanton in 2030 and London in 2100. So the characters are coming to grips with those two timelines. William Gibson's work is incredibly brilliant in its futurism and its scope. It being speculative fiction, technology is a huge theme. It's a super expansive show. It feels really big. Everything just feels grand. A lot can happen in 70 years, Miss Fisher. A lot did happen. All of us who grew up reading William Gibson's work and incorporating it into their own work, riffing on it or remixing it, when the opportunity came up to work on the peripheral, we jumped at it. The thing that really spoke to me about the peripheral in particular is out of all of the canon of William Gibson, I think this is one of his most humanistic novels. We were always drawn to things that were close to the earth, somewhat grounded, but that imagined that there was something darker, more mysterious and more interesting happening underneath. All of his work is incredibly brilliant in its futurism and scope. There's a flavor to what he does that I don't think anyone's really captured on film. People have attempted to do it, and you know, he's famous as being the godfather of cyberpunk. Thanks to Scott Smith and Greg Plegman, they wrote the show. For me as a director, the fun part is when I have a great scene that's beautifully written to just watch it happen. So much of what Gibson was talking about 30 years ago has become our daily reality. So now here's a book that's looking 70 years ahead in our future and seeing some exciting things, but also some terrifying things. It's a super expansive show and they really capture the landscapes in a way that feels raw and, and tangible. I'm such a fan when it comes to everything that Jonah and Lisa do. They truly are two of the finest producers I've ever worked with because of their enormous talent, creativity. They're the best at what they do. Just to come to this project and work with them and meet them and have discussions and interact and to see that they're actually extremely humble, down-to-earth people, that's very inspiring. The book is incredible and it's very dense and it's very intricate. I think they did a very good job at pulling that through the storyline. Conceptually, it's so huge, and for our writers, our directors, our showrunners to have been able to distill such a high concept into something that's as impactful as this show, I think that that's pretty profound. Science fiction allows you to dive into really big questions on a really big landscape, but at the same time, despite that bigness, there's an intimacy to them and a universality to them. That was such an appealing world to dive into. I hit the jackpot.